Well, this is Brock Howell with the Aurora Reimagined Coalition and Lee Spruce. Uh, sorry, not Lee Spruce. <laughs> Lee Bruch. Uh, I happen to work with the Lee Spruce, very different person. Um, we're here to walk uh, Aurora from 50th Street or thereabouts up to 63rd, uh, the Wyndham Park section. Um, we're going to try to to switch my screen if I can. Of course, this will all be edited out at some point. <sighs> How do I switch screen? There we go. We also have Poppy, the old English sheepdog here, without her full coat. So we are currently in the Rose Garden and we'll be going from here, probably the most pleasant place on Aurora in the city is the Rose Garden. Unless you're inside a building. We're going to take the west side trail of Woodland Park to start and then come back to the other side. So to start, this is the south entrance parking lot for the Woodland Park Zoo. And Fremont Avenue is just to the south here where it connects with 50th. And we'll figure out how to get back that way eventually. We will be doing a lot more of these walks over the next few weeks. So feel free to join us on a future walk or Zoom. Okay. This is a very fun little path that takes you to a tunnel underneath Aurora. Actually above Aurora. Above, uh, above Aurora, but below, <laughs> below an access road uh, for the zoo. Yeah.
Here sure. is an interesting path. Yeah. There's a path up on, on uh, the bank above Aurora that goes all the way from down by Linden, 59th, up along here. My house is at the north end of Green Lake. If I want to get to um, Fremont, the easiest, lowest grade during um, the drive period is uh, come up from 59, get on the path, and uh, go to Fremont. So I may have to repeat that because I'm not sure if my mic picked it up from my <sighs> headphones, but Lee's um, uh, path to get home, which has the least grade, is this west side path along the, the zoo here. It's just west of Aurora, behind those trees, and along this wall and fence. And um, it it is a very nice trail. I think we might actually go on it for a little bit, um, but let's go across the bridge here first. And on that walk, there's a, a, a access road inside the park, just inside the fence. Yep. And eventually, it would be really nice to see some sort of security for the park that we could have that accessible to the pe to yep. general public. Yep. So I think we'll be along the fence a little later so we can talk about the access road in a little bit. All right. Well, let's let's look to the south first here. So this is Aurora looking south towards Queen Anne. Four lanes, bus only lanes on the outside. Um, currently, there's a large dump truck or a travel truck using it. Lee, what year did um, the Aurora cut through Woodland Park? About 1932. That's Okay, so Aurora split Woodland Park here. So we have Upper Woodland Park where the zoo is and Lower Woodland Park where the play fields and tennis courts and such are. And it used to all be one park, um, but Aurora split it in about 1932. And here's Aurora to the north. Strangely, in 1930, the Seattle Times made a big deal of opposing putting Aurora through the park. A different Seattle Times in a different <laughs> era. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't that be great? Uh, a Seattle editorial board that hates highways. That would have been great. All right. Have a old missing lantern on top of one of those. Nice to see it come back. Now in Lower Woodland Park. Home to cyclocross in the fall for one or two cyclocross races and lots of cross country races for high school. You can see Aurora through the trees here. The fence, a very nice iron wrought fence. You want to do that? All right.
So WashDOT recently at the Seattle Department of Transportation's request changed the speed on Aurora for much of it from 40 to 35 or 40 to 30, but not in this segment. This is still 40 miles per hour. And it's hard for me to judge how far these cars are going, but I would guess 45. All right. Do you have a camera? Did you want to take a photo? Oh, take a, did you want to take a photo at all? No? Okay. Um, I guess I'll mention it a few times. So the segment we're walking has had about uh, 50 traffic collisions over the last 10 years. So. It's interesting that here, the uh, there's just a double line in the middle. Yes. And as opposed to the Jersey barrier to the south and to the north. Um, strangely enough, this is one of the safest places in the world. Yeah. There's nobody turning across the double yellow line, so that probably helps quite a bit. All right. Uh, yeah, that's Let's go back across the bridge or this bridge. All right. Looking north again from about the middle of this segment. And there are three pedestrian bridges across the wall here in the Yeah. We're on the middle of <laughs> And looking to the south. There are sidewalks to this segment that are very nice and wide. Maybe the nicest sidewalks in all of Aurora. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, not that they're used that much. Um, all right. When you walk, when you walk across along Aurora here at those sidewalks. Um, in the fall, all sorts of leaves and stuff accumulate on the sidewalk, and oh, yeah. very rarely get I last Yeah. Um, 
foliage fall is not a high priority <laughs> for wash shot or f shot. So we're back to the west side pass here. You can see it's a nice walking or jogging run, gets a little bit of trash. And then there's the utility road for the zoo, which could be a nice trail connection someday or expand this little footpath into a better trail, one or the other. Some really nice big trees along here too. I believe that is the home of the hippos right up there. And I don't remember if there are rhinos or not. The elephants are gone. Well, I think we should do a little figure eight on the end here and come through 63rd and back up. Let's uh, look south first. So we're on the third and most northern pedestrian bridge now. We're looking south. You can see Aurora slopes up a bit as it gets towards 50th. And we're to the north. So this is a good opportunity to talk about the idea that we have for an Aurora uh, path along Green Lake. The Green Lake is at the far end of Aurora here, and you can see the exit ramp uh, just at the end of the bus lane. And so Rapid Ride E and other drivers can pull off to the right, and they then most will turn immediately left under 63rd, which we'll walk on uh, to get over, um, what's the road there? Um, uh, that uh, Rapid Ride E goes up on. Um, Linton, Linton, we will edit that back in. Oh, Linden, Linden goes up Linden. Uh, and so Aurora, the, the uh, rapid ride E doesn't actually go along Green Lake up here, but as a result, the bus lane just terminates, um, which creates an opportunity to use that lane along Green Lake for other uses. And we hope to have a path there. I think that's about it.
I think I've seen this. This seems to be following us. All right. Should take the dirt path or the gravel path? So this parking lot is accessed from what is West Green Lake Way. Here comes up near the pit and putt and the uh, rowing center. There are a bunch of weird little parking lots all the way through here. Lee, any knowledge on this weird little bunker here? Retaining wall? It, it used to be. It used to be the um, another bridge. Oh, it used to be a fourth bridge. Huh. This one's kind of cool looking with this rock, river stone. Access. Oh, yep. This parking lot right here is actually currently owned by SDOT and is subject to a land transfer coming on June 6th to give it back to parks. So we're on Aurora, looking south. I was walking along Aurora about two weekends ago. Beautiful weekend, lots of people in the park. While I was in eyesight of this location, I noticed three groups of people at various times running across Aurora here. One looked like it was a local family, uh, the father, the mother, a couple kids. The others were all all various individual people in the twenties, thirties. Huh. So, yep. Here, let's see. Here, this is 59th Street that goes up along the north edge of the zoo, and then we have this access point into Lower Witham Park. So it can be a desire line to run across here. It sounds like. And of course, traffic is 40 plus miles per hour. Not the best place. Our sidewalk has gone down to either five or six feet from what was a nice eight to 10 feet. 
but we do have this best median between the sidewalk and the roadway. Looks like a very large limb that could be used for pruning. Some utility work being done on 60th Street there. So I'm going to take a moment here. So here's the exit of Aurora down to 63rd. You can see the bus lane has immediately ended. And then there's dash lining for allowing cars to merge through into the exit lane. And buses exit here. Watch that. We striped this in February of uh, 2020. But so there's dash lines now north of this intersection, which allows cars back into the lane. Um, from the beginning of Rapid Ride, it had been a slower line. So cars were not allowed to be in that lane. Uh, and that is our opportunity to turn that into a, uh, a path with a jersey barrier. So hopefully that can be done. I see the rapid ride E just went by. As part of the, uh, the land transaction that's happening between Parks and SDOT to give the, the land over, um, which is necessitated because of the Green Lake paving project where they added uh, two feet for a protected bike lane on Green Lake Way between the Pitch and Putt and 50th Street. Um, the land transaction included this exit ramp, which was wrong. And I, I flagged the issue for SDOT and Parks and they were fixing the map so that the June 6th hearing uh, can proceed accordingly without giving Parks this exit ramp. We have the lawn bowling area. It was a site considered by Parks that earlier this year to actually put the new Green Lake Community Center, but was ruled out. I think Poppy wants to go faster than both Lee and I do. All right, so gotta look back across. Got some serious slip lane action going here. Like it's a freeway, which it kind of is. Push the button. You see Green Lake Park that way. And the other ramp from Basically, it's the West Green Lake Way ramp back to Aurora. One of the new residents along West Green Lake Way, I think maybe mowing our yard daily, which I am appreciative of. One of our residents on a West Green Lake Way there mows our yard in the park, I think maybe daily using electric lawnmower. So it's kind of fun.
there have been many challenges over the last, I don't know, probably 20 years in keeping this mural painted as originally painted. I think this is a, actually a as I recall, there used to be one of these images used to be somebody blanking. Which way should we go? Should we go this way or back up? Uh, yeah. Looks like our sidewalk here is the pervious type as opposed to the impervious type, but it is filled in with moss, black moss. It's not sure how pervious it is now. Rainwater might not be getting through. All right, I think we're going to cut across the grass. You can see the rapid ride east stop here. Southbound on Aurora, northbound on Linden. This is one of the major uh, parking ride or uh, ride stops for the rapid ride. Um, the southbound rapid ride gets off of Aurora right. and goes on to yeah. Linden right here. They use this. The northbound or the south, the southbound stays on Aurora. Yep. The um, in my mind, this would be a nice place to have a crossing at some place along here, at grade, with the uh, with the traffic light for people to cross from this rapid ride to the Green Lake. The yeah. only other way to get there is like we just walk through yeah. the tunnel. Yeah, that'd be really nice to be able to have a new crosswalk here signalized to get people from the lake right over there on West Green Lake Way intersection. We would have to take out the Jersey barrier, put up some lights to stop traffic, make that happen. There's only one other crosswalk uh, on the segment along Green Lake, and that's about a a uh, quarter mile to the north here. So, and then there's the underpass that we just went through. Um, you can see Aurora is a Blue Star Memorial Highway right here, honoring those who served in World War II. Although when I hear Memorial Highway, I mostly think about the traffic deaths of Aurora.
Another rapid ride coming by. That feels like every six minutes. Maybe it's been 10. It's probably been six. Got a guardrail here. Making sure drivers don't fly off the embankment. I wonder how many illegal right-hand turns happen right here. Hard to get data on that without just setting up the camera. Got to be a few. Here. Hopefully no illegal left-hand turns from 62nd onto Aurora. One of the problems about slip lanes is that if you're walking in the direction that we were walking, your back is towards the traffic coming off a slip, a slip lane, and you can easily get hit. Yep, especially if cars are allowed to turn right from Aurora on the 62nd. Right-hand turns appear to be allowed here from Aurora on the 61st. It makes me wonder if there is one big collision at 62nd, but not at 61st. Right-hand turns allowed during peak hours. That seems totally unenforceable off-peak.
If Dan Strauss was with us, he'd be able to pick up the litter. I noticed when we went on a walk with him recently, he carried around a, a litter picker upper and a bucket. That is very good of our council member. All right, we have come to the northeast corner of the zoo. I don't know. I think my preference is to take the trail. Oops. Yeah. Oh, there's a lineup of cars. Why don't we head up to the trail? You can see it might be a nice connection from Linden right there if you had a bike. You go this way and then take the access road. If only that gate was open. They do have an interior fence, the zoo does. So. I can still keep us out of the zoo. Rhododendrons are blooming. Purple rhododendrons. This is not really the pretty side of the zoo. There's plenty of room right here to widen this trail that we're on by moving this fence a little bit alongside those trees. And uh, that could continue for quite a ways. Yeah, maybe the next time the zoo wants to expand or add a parking garage or something, we can condition them to uh, put a path in here. That might be nice. I'd like to end up eventually on the south side of, um, sorry, on the east side of Aurora so we can walk on 50th back. I was thinking of crossing here. Back to this guy. Thank you. 
unclear where we have the traffic barrels. Someone seems to be finding use for Seattle City Lights Electricity slash the Parks Department. Good electrical cord. Yeah, I am sure. One idea that someone shared with me was to create a, a lid over Aurora connecting lower and upper Woodland Park. Is there always fun? Either more public space or I guess the zoo to create more space for the hippos and giraffes. Let's see what I did here. Uh, oh, let's see if I can go back. There we go. Okay, back in the meeting. Problems of doing this by your phone. Sometimes Zoom doesn't cooperate. I'm going to let Puppy play fetch for a second. Puppy! I'm probably going to get in trouble. This is against Park's rules right now.
All right, we're at the third pedestrian bridge, but we're going to drop down towards 50th. So we can be sure that we have walked eventually all of Aurora or the length of it. When did you start getting into pedestrian advocacy, Lee? Um, I probably, well, I really started in the 70s when I was living in Vancouver and was an architect on the team that developed the first of False Creek. Um, but then when I moved to Seattle, got busy with other things, got involved in pedestrian ad advocacy about eight years ago. Nice. Very nice. Eight years of pedestrian advocacy. Poppy. <laughs> Got a Poppy. Come on. Sit. All right. Uh -huh. This is a two hand job. Maybe a three hand job. There we go. There we go. Poppy's back on leash. Parks have no fear. What got you into it besides working on a project when you got back? Is there something that... When I was in Vancouver, we looked at Seattle, from Vancouver, we looked at Seattle as a much better place for bicycling and for pedestrians. And we used it and uh, a couple of people that at that time were there, Scott, are sort of our guide. Um, but when I moved out here, I found that Seattle was far in arrears of where Vancouver is thinking and where they are. And so I decided to get involved in trying to make a difference. Who were the people that you're listening to in Seattle back when you were up in Vancouver? Um, what's his name? Um, at my age, you forget. <laughs> really quick. I'll remember. It what what was his job? What was his job? Um, he's he's well known. Peter. Was he the director or was he a consultant? No, he was one of the uh, guys in Escott. Okay. And got pushed out of Escott because of this progressive youth voice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, predates me. So, right, yeah. 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 Igme Tuff being uh, someone pushing the cutting edge. Sometimes it bleeds. Loggerway. Loggerway. Yep. Pete Loggerway. Peter Loggerway. I believe he recently retired from uh, Tool Design Group. Yep. Just this earlier this year sometime. Okay, so we're at 50th. Uh, Wyndham Park Avenue used to be a streetcar that came up this way. Um, and then as we look west, we can barely make out through the trees here. Uh, 50th kind of splits. There's an upper and a lower 50th. The lower 50th is how you get uh, across Aurora or underneath it. 
and then upper is a ramp on both sides that connects to Aurora. And there are a lot of collisions on the upper, and I'm going to leave that to the next group that is going to walk the south part to from 50th on south to talk about that. Um, it's not safe. One thing you'll notice is you can see there are cross bikes here on 50th, and these are new as part of the Green Lake Paving Project. And I had advocated back when it was being planned that this would be a two-way protected bike lane on the north side, tied in with another two-way that would go along the lower Woodland Park uh, playground, actually through the park parking lot. And obviously that did not happen. Um, so there are gonna be challenges that continue down at the intersection of 50th, Green Lake Way and Stone Way for bicyclists and pedestrians which is a whole nother conversation. But as we go underneath Aurora, I think you will see that is not as pleasant of an experience as it could be for both bicyclists and pedestrians because we don't have a two-way protected bike lane. This is a weird treatment to me. Uh, eastbound, you can see the driver comes to a full, complete stop, which makes sense. But westbound, the drivers um, just have this stop here for pedestrian signal a sign, a stop bar, which means they don't have to stop unless someone is crossing. And it's really confusing. As you can see, most of these drivers are slowing down. I would prefer it just to be a stop sign. Um, just so everybody takes a moment. One of the things of, that the Aurora was, because we imagine the correlation is working out, is not only to actually at Aurora itself and making it safer and making it more pleasant for people to live and walk here, but also to knit Seattle together. Right now, it is very difficult. Both sides of the wall from the park on the south. And there's all sorts of opportunities to be able to mix Seattle together. Uh, in Vancouver, most almost all the streets, both from the north, from the west, or from the east, and from the south, once they enter Vancouver, become city streets. And at those locations, there are frequent traffic lights with uh, pedestrian crossing. And some of those roads carry far more traffic than does the wall. Yes. All right. We will. So here we are next to the lower and upper part of 50th Street that crosses by. You can see the bike lane on either side. It's been restriped to add about 10 inches to the, uh, to the bike lane on each side, which is nice. But you can imagine if we had raised the bike lane to the sidewalk level and then had it two way, you would have an additional uh, eight to 10 feet. Thank you. Yep. And that's eight to 10 feet. That would be quite comfortable and get some space between the pedestrians 
and the traffic that comes by here. And for those who are going eastbound, bicycling against that wall, it would feel a lot more comfortable because you want to be against the wall. You'd be on this side. But you can see as she rode down, she was, her tires were about four inches away from the white line. She is staying away from the wall, despite the fact that biking closer to the moving traffic is probably a worse idea. That wall really makes things feel uncomfortable for people biking downhill eastbound. Currently, because of hills like this, the back lanes tend not to be used as much as they were as would be on the flat. But with the electric bikes becoming so popular, these will pose no problem and will be used much more extensively. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wayfinding could use some updating. All right, we are back to the zoo, southeast corner, Fremont Avenue. Just on 50th, looking down 50th here. And we'll walk back to where we started. Interesting, the parking lot is open for the right to pay $4 to park, but you cannot enter the zoo from this side. Well, 
We are back. Poppy, any final words? I don't think Poppy has any final words. <laughs> well, this is, I'm gonna, uh, let's see here. Take any final words of wisdom here. <laughs> we have to reimagine Aurora. <laughs> we do. Um, this may have been the most pleasant walk uh, we will have gone on this whole time. Uh, we got to go through two, well, basically almost three amazing parks. Um, so, and it's basically the only stretch where we get that. But obviously lots of improvement to be done and lots of important connections just north and south here as well. So uh, thank you and join us on our next walk. <laughs>